Rakesh Arora is now joining us. Rakesh, what do you think markets are trying to factor in with the recent up move? Are you surprised by the up move, the extent in which DIs are investing in the market? So clearly, you know, this is part of a global rally where risk on trade is on and emerging markets have been leading the way in the last three months. So India, you know, among one of the better emerging market place has been also performing in line. Uh, going forward, you know, it all depends how long this risk on trade lasts. Uh, but valuations are starting to get stretched and we are seeing stocks uh, which have been on the periphery for a long time uh, see a cyclical move up. So I think uh, the rally has some legs but we are in the last uh, leg I think. Right. In terms of the point that you made, you know, some of the stocks which have not done well have started to do well. You think uh, earlier the trade was high PE, high growth stocks is what one should look at. Now people are looking at high growth names with uh, low price to earnings or companies where shareholding is not particularly that concentrated? Yeah, so there have been some stock specific uh, moments where, you know, either there has been some event which is playing out or, you know, but also if you look at the earnings growth which has been projected for FI18, uh, largely, it is coming from cyclical uh, names like metals, commodities, uh, reliance, etc. And all these are kind of low PE stock. And that's why we are seeing a rally in you know some of these offbeat names uh, right now. Uh, the high PE names, which are the consumption names, they were the ones which are impacted by demonetization. And uh, you know there is some competition coming in from players like Patanjali, etc. Uh, so that has really cast a little bit of shadow on those names and uh, high PE names have not been performing as well. Uh, but you know, this is too good to last for the low PE names. Uh, they are low PE because of some reason. And I would, uh, you know, uh, recommend that investors remain wary of buying these stocks at high levels. Right. Uh, what do you think will lead the earnings recovery? Do you think rural economy uptake over there is the key trigger? No, see, earnings recovery in FI18 is projected to be a reasonably strong coming off a low base of FI17. So we are expecting around 17-18% earnings growth in FI18. But largely, as I said, it's uh, going to be driven by cyclical sectors uh, or, you know, banks, etc., which are coming off a very low base. And uh, to that extent, it's a low quality earnings growth that we are going to see in FI18. Uh, but, you know, surely numbers have start to look better in FI18 as compared to the last 2-3 years. But do you think the 14, 15%, 16% number that the street is expecting is achievable? Well, see, uh, historically uh, in the last 3 years we have always started with 18-20% growth to fizzle out to, you know, single digit. Uh, similar scene can play out in FI18 also, uh, you know, but we are having a very very favorable low base so i would say that the probability of uh, that kind of a similar event in fi18 is slightly less uh, but you know it can't be fully ruled out okay then you can at least tell us that is the earnings downgrade cycle behind because still about last three four years strategists always predict 18 percent 20 percent earnings growth at the start of the year and then you start seeing them trickle down towards single digit you think at least in that manner it is a reasonable uh, number where downgrade possibilities are low? So, I mean, if you look at downgrades versus upgrades, uh, we were already scraping the bottom uh, one or two quarters back. And uh, it's just that because of demonetization, things have taken a little bit of hit again. Uh, but generally, I would say that downgrade cycle is behind us. Uh, but that doesn't mean that upgrade cycle is upon us. So, you know, I think already uh, 17, 18 percent growth, which the consensus is forecasting for FI18, is uh, reasonably a uh, little bit of a stretch target. So I don't think there is a material uh, chance of an earnings upgrade cycle to start. So the best case is that we meet uh, the expectations which are there. Right. You think globally people are worried about inflation? What happens on inflation going ahead? Uh, you think uh, global inflation coming back will be good for pricing across the board? So, you know, for uh, countries uh, which are higher in debt, uh, nominal GDP growth becomes more important than the real GDP growth. So clearly inflation coming back is a little bit of good sign. Uh, India also, I think, is uh, reasonably, uh, you know, uh, reasonably placed to withstand these kind of uh, inflationary uh, pressures. 
largely because of the reforms that we have done on the oil side. So our fiscal position doesn't really get stretched as much as it used to be earlier on. And uh, so a little bit of inflation is okay, uh, but a very high inflation would mean that uh, India would also have to get into interest rate tightening cycle again pretty aggressively, and which will not be a you know, good thing. So a mild inflation is what uh, is the best case scenario, and we hope uh, that is what it plays out. Do you think that uh, cyclical recovery or cyclicals will lead to the recovery, whether you talk about earnings or any further movement in Nifty? So for FI18, it is forecasted that cyclicals will lead the earnings recovery. Uh, however, if you look at valuations, uh, we are already you know, kind of uh, reaching to the levels uh, which is factoring in that kind of recovery. So, and uh, there are a lot of uncertainties which are going to happen in uh, calendar year 2017. Uh, one obviously is the pace of interest rate hike by uh, the US Fed. Then you've got uh, Chinese elections. Then you've got few European countries going through elections. And uh, so it's not going to be, you know, a cakewalk uh, for the Indian markets and especially for the cyclical companies. So my stand would be that, you know, if you're holding on to these names, maybe, uh, you know, ride it for another uh, one or two months and then look to uh, pay exposure uh, because there's a lot of uncertainty beyond uh, middle of 2017. Right. Uh, in terms of global risk, you think that's one of the biggest risks for the market? You started by saying that markets are in a risk on mode globally. They turning risk off would be one of the biggest risks for India as well? Uh, meaning, surely, uh, you know, uh, I don't think domestic economy is doing uh, anything spectacular. Uh, meaning, post the demonetization, we're just getting back on track. And uh, we are looking to uh, healthy six and a half, seven percent kind of growth for uh, uh, currently, which is no may uh, you know uh, something which is good enough to put market into the next uh, level of valuations. So it is just the funds flow which is going to really drive the Indian markets in the near term. In the last year or so, we have seen domestic fund flows has been you know supporting the Indian markets. And uh, if the FI also turn positive, then this rally can get extended. But, you know, valuation-wise and uh, fundamental-wise, uh, things are starting to look uh, slightly stretched already. Right. Can you just tell us that in terms of DII flows that you just mentioned about, do you think it's sticky in nature? Have you done any analysis which suggests that this DII flow should continue? Well, see, theoretically uh, speaking, uh, given what government has been doing, the avenues for investing uh, for a reasonable return now drying up. So whether it is real estate or gold, and that leaves the uh, stock market as one of the key uh, areas where uh, retail money is going to flow. In 2006, 2007, at the peak of the bull market, uh, almost 8% of uh, you know uh, retail investment was in uh, financial instruments like stock market. Currently, it is around two to three percent. So there's still you know, a long way to go uh, before we can say that the retail uh, inflow have peaked out. And uh, if it is a structural change, maybe it can last for uh, much longer. So there is definitely hope that domestic inflow of uh, money into stock market will continue. Uh, FI inflows have been negative for quite some time, and uh, so that is where the variability comes in. If that also turns positive, uh, you know, then the Indian markets can go to a much higher level. So currently they are trading at 17 and a half times FI18, uh, but historically we have seen that it can get stretched up to 19 times also. So another uh, 8 to 10 percent up move can't be fully ruled out, uh, but it will all be dependent on funds flow, largely FI fund flow. And uh, Rakesh, in terms of you know the valuation multiples that you just told us. Uh, you know, 16, 16 and a half times is not uh, cheap as well, right? So any sort of negative news, whether it's globally or locally, and markets could react sharply. Yeah, definitely winning. Uh, that's the big risk. And that's what I was mentioning, that uh, the cyclical sectors uh, will face uh, some challenges uh, by middle of 2017, when elections in China are due and there could be a lot of hiccups. So during that time, I think uh, correction uh, possibly can happen and uh, investors uh, would do well to you know, book some part profits on uh, any kind of uh, upticks in some of these cyclical names. 
Right. What do you make of movement in telecom, movement happening in airline sector? Uh, do you think it's surprising or it tells you that liquidity flow is too high and people are just looking for ideas uh, to search? So telecom, uh, you know, I think the positive surprise was that uh, Reliance Geo deciding to, uh, you know, charge the customers, which uh, was slightly ahead of what the street was anticipating. So to that extent, there was a positive announcement. And prior to that, we also saw some news on uh, consolidation in the sector with Idea and Vodafone uh, in talks with each other. So these are positive movement uh, for a sector which was in a structural decline. And uh, maybe uh, you know, it's too early to say whether things are bottomed out and we are out of the rut. But clearly, there's a little bit of a bounce which is happening. Uh, airline stocks, I think, uh, follow are inversely correlated with uh, you know oil prices. So they would move, uh, you know, inversely proportional to that. Uh, notwithstanding the news that, uh, uh, you know, one of the largest investor globally has uh, changed its view on airline stocks. Maybe that might also be helping right now. Let's talk about the entire mid-cap space then. Are you surprised by the mid-cap market, the sustenance over there in terms of valuation? Even if you look at the earnings of the mid-cap companies, at least the one from the index, uh, a large one, of, large one of them, continue to show strong YOY growth as well. So I'm not surprised at all. I think uh, mid-cap will continue to do much better than large caps uh, even for 2017. And this is driven by the fact that uh, bulk of the retail money which is flowing to either mutual fund or PMS schemes, etc. Uh, they, these funds normally tend to do bottoms up approach and uh, tend to be stock pickers. So clearly the benefit would go to mid and small cap companies. And uh, I think this trend will uh, continue by and large uh, in 2017 also. Right. Uh, amongst the mid caps, uh, what are the names that you like? Uh, do you think uh, there is scope for outperformance uh, in any of the pockets in the mid caps? Uh, see, I won't be able to put names there, but uh, generally speaking, uh, one has to look for uh, specific uh, themes uh, to play out these mid caps. So, whether it is the consumption theme in India, where some brands starting to do much better or uh, is it uh, you know nbfc's uh, who have a niche space in this whole um, uh, you know financial system so there are a lot of opportunities uh, in consumption nbfc space uh, infrastructure space uh, which is where i think uh, investors should focus on uh, for 2017 uh, what nbfc's do you like you said niche nbfc's which ones are you talking of so, you know, one of the key focus areas for government is uh, low-cost housing and uh, the NBFCs which are uh, into that low 5 to 15 lakh uh, uh, house loan segment should be the ones uh, should be doing much better. Uh, clear, uh, secondly, we are also expecting two-wheeler growth to now pick up. So some of these uh, two-wheeler financing companies uh, should also start to look uh, uh, better in 2017. Right. Um, what about the banks then? Uh, what would you do with banks? You, you said that you expect earnings outperformance to come in from the banks because of a low base. We're not seeing signs of a credit pickup. Uh, what will lead to uh, this kind of outperformance? Just the low base? So banks, uh, I mean, uh, obviously uh, there's been a category of, of private banks versus PSU banks and everybody has been favoring private banks and that is getting reflected largely in their valuations. Uh, I think for PSU banks to perform, uh, government has to act uh, really uh, you know, fast for the NPA situation. And from what we understand is that uh, they are uh, you know, uh, doing meaningful round of discussions to solve this issue from its roots. So I think if there is some kind of opportunity that is largely in uh, large PSU banks and some of the uh, you know, corporate facing private banks. So I think that is the space where there could be further re rating. Uh, but private banks largely look uh, to have run their course. And uh, I would still avoid uh, small uh, PSU banks because government may not really come in to help and infuse funds uh, for banks which are not doing that great. So large PSU banks and uh, some of the corporate facing uh, private banks are the ones uh, where there's an opportunity. Uh, but there is also talk of consolidation uh, in uh, amongst the uh, uh, smaller PSU banks that have been suffering. Uh, would you uh, try to play that opportunity as well? 
Well, so doing a, you know, I mean, a kind of call is extremely difficult until the time there is some um, stock specific uh, news. Uh, you know, the risks are too high. So it is better to stick with uh, large quality, uh, you know, larger PSU names because they will the one who will eventually benefit from any kind of merger also. So uh, I would avoid, uh, you know, uh, looking at very small PSU banks. You said you uh, avoid the smaller PSU banks. Now you said amongst the mid caps you like uh, some consumption themes. Uh, can you elaborate on this? Because uh, some of the larger uh, uh, consumer names are in any case uh, trading at very high valuations. And you seem to suggest that uh, at the valuations uh, the PE trading in now, um, uh, the scope for a PE rating is uh, not that much. So how do you pick amongst the consumer names that you think will do well? So, you know, large cap and consumer names have been uh, hit on two accounts. One is uh, because of the rise of Patanjali, which has come as a credible, uh, you know, competitor. And number two is that there's some rise in uh, commodity prices, which is hurting their margins. Uh, but, you know, there are niche uh, uh, in consumption space like uh, uh, apparels, like, uh, you know, fitness. So these are uh, spaces where there's limited competition and uh, uh, you know, if you have a niche brand, companies can uh, grow at a much faster clip of 20-25% in the foreseeable future. And uh, some of these stocks are not as expensive as the large cap uh, FMCG names. So this is where I think uh, one should focus on. And uh, uh, even, you know, so uh, the tail is pretty long in consumption uh, stocks. And uh, there's a lot one can choose from. And uh, because of demonetization, the valuations have also come down for some of these companies. So uh, that's one area where, you know, one can find uh, quite a bargain. A bargain can be seen in some of the uh, consumer names. Rakesh, what do you do with the oil and gas space? Uh, Reliance has seen a big breakout today. It's uh, up 5%. Uh, what do you do with uh, the oil and gas names uh, where even gas stocks have done very well? Uh, do you think there's scope for more? Well, see, Reliance has a lot of things uh, working for itself uh, right now. So their CapEx program is coming to an end and uh, the benefit should start coming in from FIED onwards. Uh, plus, you know, Reliance Geo, which uh, everybody has kind of written off in terms of investment, uh, can start to break even if uh, they are able to retain large part of the consum uh, consumers that they have been able to sign up. And uh, so overall, I would say that uh, the stock having done nothing in the last uh, almost uh, seven, eight years, and now all this capex is starting to, uh, you know, add to their earnings. Uh, maybe it is time to go a little bit overweight and, uh, uh, you know, ride the earnings growth, which is likely to happen. What about the gas names um, like IGL, uh, Petronet, um, both regasification as well as city gas distribution names have seen a lot of action. Um, uh, you know, when you look at global crude oil prices, um, they see, they've uh, uh, moved up, but they don't seem to be shooting through the roof because uh, data is showing that uh, fracking in the U.S. is picking up again. What's in store, Rob, when it comes to gas prices and what would you do with some of these gas names? So, you know, city gas distribution companies uh, look better because they are uh, doing abnormally uh, high returns at the moment. And uh, for any utility company like that, uh, the returns are really, uh, you know, good. And compared to what any investor can make in most of these uh, debt instruments these days, uh, uh, I think uh, they are looking for yields from uh, utility companies. And that's why you have not only gas pipe companies, but NTPC, Power Grid, all doing really well. So these are kind of proxy uh, to play a kind of debt market. And uh, I think this trend can continue for some more time, uh, given limited options on debt side. All right, uh, Rakesh, thank you so much for uh, speaking with us at NDTV Profit, uh, giving us all the ideas and the themes that you like uh, for investing in the market.